Thank you and good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the best definition of economic prosperity I have seen is on wiki pages, and it is, and I quote, it's the opposite of a recession. <laughs> Why do I like it? Because it's so short, and I only have six minutes for this presentation. That video camera is so close. Stand back. Thank you. <laughs> Can we take that time off? <laughs> Plus, we all know what a recession feels like. Unfortunately, we do. It's fresh in our minds. So it's easy for us to imagine what the opposite of a recession would feel like. So let's dream for a minute that we're back in the boom times. We've got prosperity. We're living in a world of abundance, not scarcity. Bad. We have around us, we have sales checks coming in through the door. We're hiring without fear. You're confident about your future, your company's future, and indeed the future of your family. Things are good. The government is awash with public, public money. New NHS centres are popping up all around the world, around the UK, sorry. <laughs> including educational facilities that are just simply world class. And you may even be drinking free-flowing champagne and you may be wearing a Rolex on your wrist. Now snap back to reality where we are today. It's cuts, cuts, cuts. Why? Because I didn't listen to my following four points. Point number one, we have to believe that money is fundamentally good. Profit is good. So many people out there think that somehow if you're making a lot of money or you're making a lot of profit, it's somehow bad, it's got an evil connotation to it. That has got to stop. If you think about it, where does the government get its money from? It gets its money from profitable enterprise and also from income. So the more money as a company we earn, and the more money as individuals we earn, the more money the government gets. Does the government do good things with, it, with our money? Well, apart from the odd illegal war in Iraq, and this is not the place to debate that, I would say, yes it does. It looks after the most vulnerable in our society. It gives us education, it gives us the NHS, and it gives us great things. Also, think about it from an individual perspective. If you want to give some of your money to a good cause, but you don't have good money, you can't give it away. It's the number one principle of the universe that you can't give something from nothing. So let's have the abundance mentality so we've got the choice to give more away should we wish to. Point number two, we need to recognize though that money will only flow from when we create value. It's like a dog chasing its tail. It just goes around and around in a circle. If we just focus on money, we'll never get to value. So we need to create value. It's almost like at Wimbledon. If you think about the scoreboard, it is important, but the game is all important. How well we play on the game reflects how well we are on the scoreboard. So in a country like England, what game do we want to play? I would suggest to the government that we play a few games. We play, first of all, innovation. We become world-class at innovation. Number two, we become world-class at entrepreneurship. Number three, we become world-class at banking and finance. Why? Because we already are good at it. Let's embrace it. And number four, we become world-class at digital media. Why digital media? Because that's the industry that I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Point number three, we need to recognize that we can only discriminate on one thing or one thing alone. We can't discriminate on race, color, age, sexual orientation, nor should we ever do that. But we can, as employers, discriminate on one thing, and that is performance. Let us continue to discriminate on performance. Let us become less like continental Europe and more like America. Let me illustrate my point. When I was hired by our CEO as the managing director of our New York office, it said in the first line, we can fire you at will. <laughs> The first six months of my employment contract there, I was a little bit worried, to tell you the truth, and so much so, my CEO was a Yankees fan. I didn't come into the office the day after the Yankees lost in fear that I would be in his firing line. <laughs> six months later, I suddenly realized, well, hold on a second, I am still employed. Why am I still employed? Because I performed. We shouldn't judge anyone. We can only discriminate on performance. Also, individually, it's not fair as an employer if we keep people doing the same job that they're no good at. They don't have the inherent skills to do it. It's just going to kill their self-confidence. Allow them to set them free and do something that they are good at. So they can then add value around them and they can be, build up their own self-confidence. You may be thinking, you should set me free, but I hope not. <laughs> Point number four, that we need to recognize that we need to encourage and we need to celebrate the successful people in this country, not beat them up. What I mean by that is, and it's personified by this quote from Ken Livingston. 
I do like Ken Livingston, but listen to this quote. Referring to tax on the September the 21st this year, he said, I think it should be at least 60% rate for everybody over £200,000. You might even look at 80% for people earning £1 million. These are exactly the people that have messed this up. Ken is great at reducing congestion. <laughs> But his economic policy in this regard, on this matter, in my opinion, absolutely fundamental categorically sucks. <laughs> Let me explain why. If I was a consultant and I walked into your organization, you hired me as a consultant, and I walked in and I said, who's this Joe Schmo guy? And he said, well, Joe Schmo is my number one sales guy. And I was like, well, get rid of this Joe Schmo. He's, he's an idiot. He's evil. And he said, no, but he's my number one sales guy. Your, your intuition would kick in. And I'd be like, no, but the money I pay him is proportionate to the amount of wealth he generates for our co company. And if I reduce his commission, he will lead to a competitor. It's the same thing from a countrywide perspective. If we don't embrace our talent in this country, they will leave. We're, li we're living in a global mobile workforce. So in conclusion, we need to do four things. We need to say, one, that wealth is good and really believe it. Number two, that money follows value. So we've got to create value. What game are we playing? Number three, we can never discriminate on anything but performance. And number four, we need to embrace the talent in our country and keep them here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Most importantly, I wish you all long-term economic prosperity. Thank you. Thank you.